The Bible says that as heaven is far from earth, so the thoughts of God are far away from the way you are thinking. It's an amazing thing just to know the distance between heaven and earth. And if the Bible is saying that the way God thinks and the way you think, this is the distance. It's a huge distance. So you find yourself trapped into things that you don't understand. Be mindful to give them names. Because when you give them names, they become what you name them. Don't just see yourself going through a situation and say, I'm in trouble. The moment you say, I'm in trouble, then you have just given a name to what you're going through. And if it is not a name of God, the devil takes the form. Because God will never put you in trouble. You're going through something, you say, I'm, I'm in trouble. God is not going to take that word. The devil will take that word. Because it's of him. And the devil will use it against you. You're going through a situation, you say, God is able. Then God takes that word. Because that is his, then he uses it. Amen. Nobody knows what we go through in moments. Our life is compounded. I can imagine the life of Joseph when he was sold into slavery. I can imagine what he was thinking at that moment of how he has been rejected and abandoned. I can imagine what was going in his mind, a teenager. First of all, imagine being sold by his own brothers that are meant to protect him. Sold pushed away in a faraway country. Imagine what was going in in Joseph's mind. I don't know whether he developed hate against his brothers at that moment. Someone was sharing something with me and I tried to explain to them but they could not understand. And I said to them, how old is your son? He said, my son is seven. I said, now I want you to sit and close your eyes and see your son coming to you, seeking the help that you were seeking when you were seven. What will you do? He got the picture straight away. He loved his son so much. And he got the picture. So sometimes, we, for us to get the picture, you know, just think, just think of a teenager. Just think of any teenager being sold by his own brothers in a faraway country. Imagine what was going on in his head as he was tied following this man. And he went and he stood in the slave market, probably very naked because that was the structure at that time. Standing in the slave market, people are coming to buy people, and Joseph is standing right there, naked, with his hands tied. And then people are coming, Potiphar came and bought him. Imagine, imagine 13 year old child being bought by someone. He doesn't know this person. Where they are taking him, he doesn't know. He followed. Do you want to cry? For Joseph, it was the worst moment of his life. Imagine, it was the worst moment. But to God, he was setting a path for him. Amen? To God, God was setting a path for Joseph. Your worst moment today could be God setting a path for you. Amen? Your worst moment today could be God setting a path for you. And all you can do is to be hopeful. And all you can do is to have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. Even as we are moving into a new year, just build your confidence. Today we are looking at the very last stage of what forgiveness truly is all about. So the first stage we talk about, you don't forgive people. For them, you forgive people for yourself, which means... The person who has hurt you or done whatever they have done to you does not have to know or even feel sorry or come to you and say sorry because you are not doing it for them, you are doing it for yourself. So forgiveness is setting someone free, signing all the documents and say, I want this person to be set free and realize that you were the one, you yourself 
set yourself free. That's what forgiveness is. And the second stage we talk about is for you to be able to understand. For you to truly forgive people, you must know the pain and you must know the truth about the pain. Knowing the pain, what really happened, and know the truth. One thing I have noticed with many, many, many people, many people and sometimes even myself, which I am trying to separate myself from that now, I don't want to. Many, many people don't want to know the truth. So for instance, Elijah would do something. Elijah would be sitting down there, but they would not go to Elijah and ask Elijah about it. They would go to the Connect Susan and ask her. Or why you can ask him if you really want to know the truth? He's just there. Why do you want to go and visit Deaconess Susan to know the truth when she is not the one? But our, that's how our mind works. Our mind likes to chase the wrong things. And we easily hold on them and very hard to let them go. But if you want to be set free, you must know the truth. Which means you must learn how to go to the people that you really want to talk to. Like for instance, if you, if you had a story about your mom, instead of you making stor stories, go and sit with your mom and say, Mommy, I really want you to tell me something about when I was young, what happened. Let her explain to you what happened. Don't beat corners. Nobody knows what really happened like the person that, was, that it happened to. Maybe they themselves may not even know completely, but they have more truth than any other person you will go to. So you have to be very willing to talk to the person. Be very willing. Be very willing. Like a lady I was talking to. She just hated her dad. Because her mom told her a story about her dad. Hated the dad. Didn't want to see him at all until he can die. Because in her mind, she has created this wicked man who had no sympathy. Until when she came and she said, you know, I, I really need to be healed. And I said, share with me, explain to me what happened. And she started explaining. I said, have you ever spoken to your dad about this? She said, no. I said, can you? She said, I can't. I said, you, if you truly want to be healed, you need to talk to your dad. You need to ask your dad exactly what happened. And when she asked the dad, she got the truth. She turned to her mom and she said, Mommy, why did you lie? It was a lie. Well, maybe the mommy did not lie. But the mommy made her own story because she had a problem with the dad anyway. But this woman has gone for over 30 years of her own life, hating the man who loved her so much and who was there to protect her. But he was suffering too. So know the truth. Don't just go around making stories. Know the truth. Amen. If you truly are genuinely wanting to be set free, know the truth. The second thing is you need to try to be healed. And that is something you cannot do on your own. Now you're going to go around, know the truth. Try to ask the story what really happened. When you get the story, please don't take it personal. Come to God and say, God, I can't handle this. Help me. I can't handle this. And God will surely help you if you truly mean it with all of your heart. And after that, after you've gone to God and God has healed your heart, then things will begin to be revealed to you. And then you can first forgive yourself. First. That's the third thing. You cannot forgive anybody in this world if you cannot forgive yourself. A lot of people try to forgive other people when they have not forgiven themselves. And that's not going to work. You're making mockery out of yourself. It's never going to happen. You cannot give what you do not have. You can only give what you have. And the fourth stage is where you now forgive others because you've known the truth you have been healed from the wound and the trauma and now you can go to this person you are not going to this you don't even need to go to this person in the first place you don't need to go to this person but it will also help to relieve the person if the person is seeking healing too for you to go to them but listen now you're not going to this person to make yourself feel right and make them feel wrong 
Don't go with this intention now. Then you are not still healed. You're not going to this person to make yourself look good and make them look bad. You're getting the whole story wrong. You're going to this person to let this person know that what they did to you, whether they did it consciously or unconsciously, it, it hurt you, but now you have been healed and you are you forgiving them. Even if they yell and they shout and they say, you know what, I didn't forgive you because you don't have, you really don't have a dealing with that because you have been healed anyway. So you let them be what they want to be, but you just want to let them know. And that maybe at that moment, it will not bring them comfort, but at a particular point, they will say, oh my God, my mom really forgive me. It will bring them comfort. Maybe, I don't know how many, because they understand that they are sick. This person is sick. This person is sick. They may want to even cause more trouble. But when the awareness arises in them, now they know that this person has forgiven me and it's easy for them to be healed. If you follow this, this, these steps, it will help you. It will help you a lot. I, I can tell you this for true. If you are in this church and you're carrying certain baggages, you're just willing to take it for yourself because as far as I'm concerned, I know how much the leadership of this church love each and every one of you. I know. I know that. You can try to build stories for yourself. Nobody can help you with that. You got leaders, you got elders in this church who truly, honestly pray for you. And I know that I'm convinced, even if I am still growing and I have a lot to learn. I've not been in this for long, but at least I've been around for about 20 years. I've worked with different pastors. And I know that the elders of this church are genuine and they pray for you diligently. And I know the pastors of this church love you with everything. And all they think about is for you to grow and for you to be better. We sit down, we talk every Wednesday. The pastors and myself, we meet in this room. We pray for you. We talk about how we can help people, what we can do every time. Because we love you. That's why for me, when people come to this, people come to me sometimes, they say, I am leaving the church. Only thing I can tell them is... I want to honor you before you go because I don't see any other thing else that we can do for you anyway. Can I please honor you? Give us the honor to honor you before you leave. It's all I can say. And I tell them, if you truly are going because God wants you to go, remember that anytime you need help, if you don't call me, if I am to help you, that means you still have something against me. Promise me. It's all I can tell people. Because I know we love you so much. But if we truly love you so much, we should also love you to the point where we can let you go. That is what true love is. True love is without attachment. You can come and say, oh, pastor, I want to go. And say, oh, no, don't go because... No, 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 no. I will never, ever... It doesn't matter. Even if my wife say, pastor, I am going, I will say, I want to honor you. My mother-in-law, I will say, I will honor you before you go. Because I know our hearts. I know our hearts. Our hearts are there for you to grow. I will never say, please, I beg you or haunt you, never. Many have left and they've come back. Because I know my heart. And to some extent, I know the heart of the elders of this church and the pastors. I, to some extent, I know their hearts. It's all for you. And we will not make one plea to say, sorry, oh no, don't go no more. We'll ask you questions. Why? Is there anything we can fix? Is there anything we can do? Yes, those things are okay. But please don't go no. God, go with you. We give you flower. Because we know that you are on a journey. This could be another stage for you. And that's another stage coming. Where that stage is going to happen, I do not know. We can stop. So I encourage you. Let go of things. Let go of things. Flourish as a Christian. Let go of things. Flourish as a Christian. Let go of things. Flourish as a Christian. Let the word of God sit in your heart. Let the word of God sit in your heart.
Today, we are looking at how do you truly know you have forgiven someone. A lot of people have come to me to say, I don't even know if I have forgiven this person. Now, how do you know if you have truly forgiven someone? How do you know you have forgiven someone? How do you know? We struggle because we are holding on so many things. And we want to forgive. We hear the teachings. And I have laid down five steps before you. And the last one. The way you know you have forgiven is when you start to have compassion towards the person who hurt you. And we're going to look at compassion. When you start to have compassion over the person who has hurt you, then you know. Because when you have compassion, I will tell you what compassion is. I don't know where I was sharing this. I shared it somewhere. There's someone I love so much, and I, I look up to them, I talk to them most of the time. And one time, this person just wrote me a text, a message in my, in my WhatsApp. And the message was a very bad message. Like, I, I can't imagine that this person will ever write this message to me. Very bad message and send audio voice. Said a lot of things. And this is someone that is older and I look up to this person. An audio voice. And I listen to this voice. My heart was torn. I said, my God, why? How can, how can this person even think this way about me? I can't imagine. And now I... And not one time, not two times, like maybe four different messages. Four different messages. And what I did was, I tried to call her. I tried to call the person. And then, sorry, but I lied. When I spoke to this person, the way she spoke to me, I knew that. She's drawn far away from me. And she started justifying. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, I did not receive. I said, my WhatsApp is having a problem. So I didn't receive any message, no audio. And suddenly, she was relieved. And she started talking to me as we normally we talk. And I said, please send me back all the messages that you said you have been sending me, but my WhatsApp had a problem. I did not receive these messages. And guess what? She sent me different messages. But the miracle is that our relationship remained the same. It did not damage. Because in her mind, I have not received the messages. I didn't hear everything she said. But why did I do this? I feel sorry for her. She is troubled. She's very troubled. I don't know the stage in which she was in when she wrote these messages. She was very troubled. And I know most of the troubles. I know what's going on in her life. I know what's going on in her, in her family life. And I'm thinking to myself, she must be really troubled. And I didn't want her to feel that she did that to me. So I had to first lie, which I'm standing before God and I'm saying I had to lie. But the lying, no lying is healthy, don't lie. But I just had to do this. And up to this day, our relationship is okay. 
It's not everything. When you look at people with compassion, it's not everything they do you take into account. Because they are suffering. I was listening to a man in court whose son was killed by another boy. His son was killed by another boy. And they asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to talk to this boy. I want to talk to him. And he sat with him one-on-one -on -one and he said, son, why did you do what you do? And this boy broke down. He started crying. And started explaining his story. I was moved from one home to the, to the other for five different homes. From my age three, I was moved from one home to the other, one home to the other, five different homes. And the last home that I ended were drug addicts. They used to beat me and put me in the cupboard and lock it. They used to beat me, put me in the cupboard, lock me up in the cupboard. I'll be there for the whole night. That type of person, what do you think that person will do? So when they ask him, what do you want us to do with him? He said, if I was the law, I will not put him in jail. I will not sentence him. He needs love. But this is a man who have just lost his son. He killed his son. But now he is saying, don't put him in jail. He just needs love. What happened to this man? This man had compassion. He was grieving his son that is dead. But he had compassion for the one that was living. Because the one that was living has gone through many things in life. Let me tell you, if you have compassion, you will not have, forgiveness will not be a problem. But what we lack today is compassion. Compassion is what you lack. And I will share with you. In the book of Luke, chapter, chapter 23, verses 35, 34. Luke 23, Luke 23, 34. Why did Jesus look at the people? And he said, Father, he was in pain. They were beating him. They nailed him. They dragged him. They spat on him. They lied. Everything. He looked at these people and said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Why did he say that? Why did Jesus say that? Compassion is a very high frequency. You know when you turn the fan on and there's small dust. You know when you turn the fan on, the dust can just, the fan can just sweep the dust. That is compassion with sin. When you have compassion, you are the fan. And any small, all the little, little problems, they will fly away. If you still have small problems, this person did this one, you go and you grow wind about the person, you, your fan is not turned on. If you still have those little, little whinging, this, uh, your fan of compassion is not turned on. It is better for you to turn your fan of compassion on, so all the little, little things will just fly away. Somebody say, I need to turn my fan on. When, when the fan is not on, you will see all the small, small, small things. Even if someone says something about you, you will feel upset. You see something, you will feel upset. You hear something, you will feel upset. Everything upset you because your compassion fan is not turned on. When your compassion fan is turned, nothing can stand it. Nothing can stand it. Compassion means to suffer with, suffer together with. That's what the word compassion is. Come from two, word, two words, party and come. Party, suffer, come together. So compassion means, Mama Vivian, regardless of what you, are, you do to me, I should suffer along with you because whatever you've done or whatever I have done, you have gone beyond what I have done to you. You have seen the cause why I did it, and you begin to help me. What compassion does is, compassion, when you are compassionate, you help the person who has hurt you. Because you are not seeing what they have done to you, even though you are aware of it, but you see what prompted it. So there is a difference between compassion and sympathy. 
Sympathizing is just an, a most, many people just have sympathy. They feel sorry, but they want to pay back. You say, forgive this person. What they have done to you is because of this. They feel sorry because of that thing happened to the person. But why, why, why must he do it to me? Why must he do it to me? I know, yes, I know his life was not okay, but why should he do it to me? I want to pay back. Because there is no compassion. There is sympathy though, but no compassion. No compassion. When you have compassion, you want to help the person. When you have sympathy, you feel for them, but you don't want to help them out of their pain. You don't want to help them. And for you to be able to have compassion for someone, you have to see beyond what they have done to you. You need to go into their life to try to understand why they have to behave the way they behaved. And this does not mean you are trying to say what they did to you was not wrong. We have already talked about this one, so we're not going back there. It just means that you have had a deeper level of awareness now, your awareness is far bigger than just being carried away by little things. You are aware, you are alive, you are awakened. Someone who is not being validated in his or her family. Everything he did or she did was not validated. Anywhere that person goes, she wants to push herself to everybody can see her. And if nobody wants to see her, she causes problems. She always want to be seen. She want to be validated. She want people to validate her. She want people to say, always she want people to say, it's you. Yes, you've done well. If you don't say this word, she feel that she has not seen. She push herself all the time. So when you understand this history, you just give these people way to stand in the front. You don't stand on their way. You don't compete with them. You just give them way. Because what they are looking for is validation. When they were growing up, everything they did, nobody told them, you've done well. And this person can do anything, anything it takes for them to be seen. Anything. If, including bringing other people down, they would do it just for them to be seen. So there are a lot of things that comes with people's behavior. Lot of things. Sometimes people just had to do extra things in their family for them to be notified. Extra things in their family. So when this person gets job, I tell you, oh boy, you got to recognize him or her as your boss. If you don't, you are in trouble. Fire. You have to recognize this person as your boss. When you see them walking, you will know that, yes, they want to be recognized. They want, because this is the only thing that validates their life. This is the only thing that has made them feel what they wanted to feel a long time ago. Now they got this position of manager or pastor or this, that. They will step on everyone. They must be recognized. Like, these are the people who ask the question, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are speaking to? They will never relate with you as a friend. They will relate to you as their boss. Whenever they introduce themselves, it's their position first. So there are a lot of people that are wounded and broken. And they're moving around. And we are dealing with these people. And if we don't try to understand, like most of the time people come to me and say, I have a problem with this person. I say, I give you an assignment. Give yourself seven days. Try to invest. Just love this person and do everything you want them to do that is right, that they want you to do that is right, not the wrong one, the right one, and get close to them. I give you seven days. They will share with you a story that will really make you to know why they're going through what they're going through. Try it. Anybody who is giving problem at your workplace, just be very close to them, be friend to them, open up to, open up to a certain extent to them. When they open up to you, you will know why they are behaving the way they are behaving. They will either tell you something is going on in their home. They will tell you something is happening. Their wife is doing something. Their husband is doing something. So this is the only place they can come and make everybody look small so that they can be seen. Just go deep. I give you the assignment. Go to your workplace. Someone who is acting very hard to deal with or acting... 
just try to know them, you understand that they are broken from home. The workplace is the only place where they can come and step on people and make themselves important. And make themselves important. So sympathy is not compassion. Many people, are, they sympathize, but they do not have compassion. In fact, there are studies that prove that when people have compassion, their, their heart rate is very regular and it beats normal and at a slow pace when people have compassion. There are health benefits, lot of health benefits to compassion. Lot, go and type compassion and see the health benefit. When you have compassion, your body produces certain uh, chemicals that help you to be well. So compassion is important. Don't be carrying heavy load all the time. Have compassion. Do you know you can have compassion for yourself? Some of us are very hard on ourselves. Very hard on little mistake you capitalize on it for five years. Just little mistake you made. All the good you have done vanishes. Only that one little mistake you know about. Everywhere you go, you define yourself by that little mistake. Some people up to this point, they are defining themselves by the little mistake they did when they were young. When they were like 5 or 10 or 15. Now they are 40, they are 60. They are still blaming themselves for the little mistake they did when they were 7. People always come. I always talk to people. They are blaming themselves when they were 12 years old, how they allow someone to abuse them. They, they are telling themselves, I did it. Imagine you were 12 years old. Someone molested you. And you are saying you did it? And you still carrying that load up to this point that you did it. So you must have compassion. Compassion. Life is life. You meet with someone, they maltreat you, they treat you very bad. When you walk out of that person's life, don't go blaming yourself. I mean, you love the person. They didn't love you. They treated you like whatever. And now you are not there. Let them go free. Have compassion. But have compassion too over yourself. You can't blame yourself. If you knew that person was that bad or wicked, will you have gone to that person? You wouldn't have. You did not know. And now the person has revealed themselves to you. And you've walked out of it. Just let them be. Let them go. Someone say, let them go. Let them go. Give yourself the benefit of compassion. Give yourself the benefit of compassion. You know, speaking to you, for me, my personally, my father, I had to have compassion over my father. I thought I forgive my father, but I didn't. Until when God really healed me. Because I always blame my dad. Why he left me at six. I, I wouldn't have been what I was. If he, if he was always there. And so, I mean, so many things. But this was a man who didn't have love. He wasn't loved. A broken child in a man. And all this broken child could do in this man was to run away from his responsibility. That was all he could do. To him at that moment, it was the best thing to do, but to run away. And when I saw my dad, when I look in his face, and the Spirit of God said to me, if you don't let this man go, you're going to be exactly like him. And I said, I don't want to be like him. I do not want to be like him. I do not want to be like him. Have compassion. Have compassion. See people. Not all the things that people, let me tell you, most of the things people do before you, they want to show that they can, it's all brokenness. Don't look at these things. The, anyone who is well will not try to destroy another person. I want you to know this. They may come dressed nicely and try to talk to you anyhow. Act as if as they know how to talk. And these people, I tell you, when they talk to you, you feel small. But they're just projecting themselves. They are small. Only their words is making them big and their action making them big. But they are small. They are small. You walk Walk out of it. 
Walk out of it. You see someone come to you, want to fight, want to do this, want to do this one. And then you stand in front of that person. Don't be sick. Don't be sick. Someone is moving from house to house, one house to the other house, to the other house, to the other, talking about something, just moving from house to house. What do you think that person is doing? They are just broken. And all they are trying to do, they are looking for compassion. But the sorrowful part is this. When some, whenever someone comes to you and tries to destroy another person, know that this person is sick, they are looking for healing. How can you heal them? Don't follow them in saying the bad thing. Say something good about the person they are talking about. What is going to happen is that you're going to stop them. You're helping them. And they're going to be, they're going to catch awareness. They're going to catch awareness. Anytime someone goes to you and they try to put someone down, know that this person is sick and they are looking for someone to approve them. But the only way I know that they are looking for healing is like they are going from one doctor to the other doctor to the other doctor to the other doctor. Don't follow them in saying the wrong thing. If you do not have anything good to say about the person they are talking to you about, say something good about either them or say something good about something else just to divert their attention and it gives them a little bit of space in their heart to breathe. And what you are doing there, you are helping them to heal. Divert their attention. But the moment you say, oh yes, that, that's it. You are just wounding them more and more. Do you want to heal someone? Do you want to heal someone? Help relieve people who are going around trying to destroy. They always want to prove a point. And most of the time their point could be right. But it's just destroying someone else. Which does not have any reason anywhere to do. Like you can do something, hundred things to me. Good things. How can't I think that there is something bad? You, you are seeing something bad about me? I'm not perfect. You will pick up on this bad thing. But what about all the hundred good things that have been done? Why would you want to talk about the one bad thing but not the one hundred things? Because you may be sick. You have a virus and you can only catch virus. When you have virus, you can only catch virus. So when you are sick, you can only catch another sickness. That's why. So you need to be mindful. You must be a healer. You must be someone who is willing and ready to heal people who come to you. People who come to you. Compassion, but your heart must be full of compassion. Jesus came in this world and he taught us how to be compassionate. He looked at the, the soldiers. He knew they were not themselves. These soldiers were not themselves, where they were going by commands. They couldn't have much to do. Understand these soldiers were under a yoke and under a bondage. How can Jesus compare himself with them? They were under the law. They were under a command. They had to do what they were told to do. They had no choice but to do it. So Jesus looking at them, he was hungry. He looked at them and he said, Father, look at them. They are not themselves. They've lost consciousness. They are beating themselves and they think they are beating me. He said, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, someone is overtaken by certain spirit or is under a yoke or is under a bondage. They are not themselves. This person goes to destroy you. You are sitting up there. You look down and you say, God, deliver this person in the name of Jesus. God, deliver this person. I can see what they're going through. They are not themselves. They are under an oppression. They are under bondage. They are under a yoke. Lord, forgive them. How many of us we start to do that? You sit with Jesus above all principalities and powers. But you can see a brother down there who has been captured with principalities and powers, lies and, and, and hypocrisy, perversion and all kind of things. But you sit up there. You look at them regardless of how much they are destroying you. But you say, God, he or she does not know what they are doing. Forgive them. 
You can make that choice today. And I tell you, you fill your heart with compassion. Your frequency and vibration is high. Evil cannot sit in you. You become evil slayer. You defeat evil because you carry the grace. Nothing bad can sit in your presence. It's just for them to appear before you and they are ready to dissipate because you carry a higher level of frequency. And this will bring healing. And let me tell you this one. Demons fear compassion. They cannot come around people who are deeply compassionate. They can't. Because compassion is a frequency. It vibrates. They can't. They can't. That's why even when people are having generational curses, you know why they, even as a child, you see that that curse is not manifesting in the life of the child until they grow up? Because the moment they grow up, they begin to attract other things. And then that spirit has the right to now function at the level because there are things that this person is doing that is allowing that demon to function. But when they were a child, when they are kids, they have so much of compassion, this demon cannot operate. They can't do anything to this child. This child has to grow up and begin to fall into the pattern and that we allow this spirit to take over their lives and begin to use them. You set yourself free. This is the last session. But after all of these five sessions, be a different person. Live intentionally. Amen? Live intentionally. Be intentional in your living. Don't just live. Be intentional. Be fully aware. Don't be unawares. When you talk to people, be fully aware of every word you're telling them and be willing to take responsibility for it. And when you hear people speak to you, be very alert and know everything they are telling you and take full responsibility of what you are listening to. It's a conscious way of living. When you meet with people, be fully aware of who this person is and who you are dealing with. Live consciously and live in full awareness. Let me tell you, people are broken. People are broken. People are broken. People are broken. I was looking at a documentary. It's a young man from the United States. Parents left him. They used to leave him home all by himself. They would go and spend the whole day, almost all night, and come home. And this young man come from school. Nobody is home, and they were living far away where other children are not. This young man, we wake up. The moment he comes from school, nobody is home. He wakes up, he, he, he wanders in the wood. He wanders in the wood. He go and sit down in the wood, and the only thing that could come is, an, is this, he will see animals. And because the animals were used to him every day, he would go to that place, they used to come around him. And the animals became his family. And guess what happened? This young man started sleeping, having intercourse with animals. And that's how he grew up, having intercourse with animals. That's all he knew. He didn't have any affection for no human being. No, no human being, but only animals. Why? A door was open. A lot of things happened. A door was open. A lot of doors have been opened. People are going through so much. You and I, we think that we have dealt with everything that happened in our lives, particularly for us that came from war-torn countries. We've seen bloodshed. We've seen people treated badly. You are not free from these things. You are susceptible to them. And sometimes these things play on you. And this is why you must be able to manage your emotions because sometimes these things can happen, flashbacks. Some of us have been with people who maltreated us and molested us to the point. You think that you are free from it up to now? The Bible says that whoever comes to Christ is free. But I can tell you, your emotions are still alive and alive. And sometimes these things come over you. 
Don't let them overwhelm you. Don't let them use you. Just observe them and they pass and then you are back. It's important. This is why we say oh, when we come to Christ this, that there are a lot of things when we come to Christ that we have to deal with intentionally. There is salvational grace. I understand that. But there are certain grace. They are not part of the salvational grace. They are part of other graces. And if you don't understand this, you say, oh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has set you free. Of course, you are free. But why are you the way you are? You know that you are not absolutely and totally free. There are things you are not free from. How long have you been a Christian? 30 years. But there are things you are not still free from yet. You think they are going to go away? No, it must be by intention. If you want to deal with them, you have to deal with them intentionally. You cannot be a bondage. You cannot be under bondage when you are in Christ. But when you are in Christ, there are certain steps you have to take to be set free finally. And this is why prayers is important. This is why fasting is important. This, thing, this is why Jesus says some of these things will not happen. You have to take a, a new dimension. Being in my presence will not just make this thing to happen. There are things that you have to do for these things to happen. Jesus said for such things cannot just happen except true. And there are a lot of truths in the scripture. Certain things will not happen except. 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 And these exceptionals are plenty in the scriptures. But we don't look for the exceptionals. Young man going around looking for someone to prophesy in his life everywhere. Two master's degree running here and there cannot keep a job. Nothing of the kind. Floating all over the place traveling from one county to the other. And the mother is in the street mad with two masters. Nothing good is happening. And thank God there are still some men of God who are willing to speak the truth and not take your money from you. And he went to a man of God and man of God said, listen to me son. You go and look for your mother. I don't need anything from you. So man of God will say, give, give 5,000. Even if you give 100,000, what you're supposed to do, if you don't do it, it will not happen. You'll be frustrated. He said, come son, you go and look for your mother. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. He went to look for his mother, mad mother, in the street, running all around. The mad mother saw him coming. Automatically, he became, she became sober. She sat on the floor. And she said, son, sit down here. For five minutes, she was sober. She spoke in his ears. And she said, go. The moment the boy woke up to cross the road, the madness came. She jumped in the street and hit by a car and died. But the only reason why God kept her was for the secret that she unlocked for the son. And when the son left that day, the ways were open. No prophet can break it for you. No apostle. What your mother has to do for you, she'll be the only one to do it for you. It's a heavenly law. It's a divine law. What your father has to do for you is only him that can do it for you. Heaven. God cannot change his word. Which prophet can change God's word? Where you are coming from? Where did you get your anointing from? What God has locked in heaven? Then you want to come and change it? No, 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 no. It cannot happen. You did not come through that man and that woman for nothing. You mothers, you are here. Sometimes your children can be acting very rude. Tell them you want a future. You want, there's a principle and a protocols to future. You can have all the degrees you want. You will, be, you will walk in the street with nothing. If you don't look for your blessing, where are you supposed to look for it? Parents, be very mindful. Mothers and fathers. You see your child going astray and they are doing something. Let me tell you, the most successful people in this world, they are not, most of them are not, they don't have degrees. They don't have degrees. They don't have master's doctor. No, no, they don't. There are principles in this war that we have to follow. Oh, I wish how everyone will love the scripture and follow the principles of God. I tell you, many things that you are looking for, <laughs> the Bible says that they will follow you. God did not ask us to look for anything. He said, look for the kingdom. When you find the kingdom, the rest is in it. But most of us, we are going around looking for things. We don't even know where the kingdom is in the first place. Sons and daughters of God, your father is a good father. He knows more than you. And his desire is to bless you. But he's a man of principles. 
They are locked and he has not hidden them from you. He has given them to you. All you need to do is to find these principles and live by them. And you will see what God will do. No door. Let all the witches come and gather. They cannot shut the door that God has opened. They can't. Let all the witches come and gather. They cannot shut the door that God has opened. But there is a key to that door. If you don't have it, you will stand outside for so long. You will stand outside for so long. I beg you, as we're entering in 2023, choose this day that God, to the best of my knowledge, I will follow your word. Amen? Choose this day that God, to the best of my knowledge, I will follow your word. God, to the best of my knowledge, I will allow your word to sit in my heart. God, to the best of my knowledge, I will allow your word to be my guide. To the best of my knowledge, your word will be a lamp and a light. To the best of my knowledge, I will commit myself every day, even if it is one verse from your word, I will take it in as a tablet. Make this commitment. 2023, see what God will do for you. Base your life on the principles and the promises of God. Not man. Man cannot do anything for you. But just base your life. Let your foundation be God's word. Take it. If you cannot read, listen to it every day. If you can read one verse every day is enough to help you. If you are willing not only to listen to it or read it, but to live it. Amen. To live it. To live it. In Jesus' name. Tonight, if you are in this place, we don't want to leave here without praying for you. You've come here to be prayed for. Trust the word of God. It's true and it's real. And I want you to come, even as I call for the musicians to come, the, 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 the ministers to come. We want to pray for you. We want to anoint you with oil and pray for you. Because the word of God and we believe it. We lay hands and we pray. And the Bible says that those who, are, who have problems, sick, let them come to the elders and let the elders lay their hands and pray. And the prayers of the righteous, we heal, we deliver, we set free. Tonight, if you are here for prayers, please walk to the altar and come. We pray for you. Let us please rise up. Come, we pray for you tonight. Now I want you to begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Say, God, compassion. Fill my heart with compassion. Fill my heart with compassion. Elders, please come. Let's pray. And you may also feel that, you know, maybe I don't have enough compassion in me. But God, I truly want my heart to be filled with compassion. I will feel sorry that I will feel compassionate towards people. Give it all to God and say, God, I surrender to you today. Let every foul spirit please come to the altar. If you want to kneel, you can kneel if you can. And for some of you watching us online, my prayers for you as you believe God with me is that as you are moving into a new season of your life, that the Lord himself we show you mercy. That the Lord himself will show you mercy. May God show you mercy. May God show you mercy. May God show you mercy. May the grace of God rest upon you. May the power of God reveal strength to you. Every curse upon your life we break in the name of Jesus. Every yoke upon your life we break in the name of Jesus. Every curses today we break in the name of Jesus. Any pattern 
of the enemy that we come against by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. With heart in the peace, we release the power and the anointing of God. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Everything. And I give to you in the name of Jesus. With heart in nothing, every intrusive thought, every intrusive thought, with heart in nothing, I surrender.
I send compassion. I pray for their healing. I pray for their deliverance. I pray for their healing, God. I pray for their healing. I pray for their deliverance. Have compassion. Maybe someone close to you. Say, God, I stand in the place of love. I stand in the place of love. And I allow love to overtake my heart. And God, compassion. The treatment, the treatment of compassion is what is called mercy. Mercy. God looked down. He saw a sheep without a shepherd. And he had mercy. And he sent his son. Because he's the merciful and everlasting father. As you leave this place today. Let this be. Let this be. Your life. A life of compassion. See everything deeply. Look at things with the eyes of your heart so you will know and feel the wounds of people. In Jesus' name.